6th, April 20th. Just got an email this morning that one of my dear friend's wife just passed away. She had cancer and uh, it had metastasized throughout her body. And about three weeks ago, she went down to Mexico for an experimental treatment to save her life. She has two small kids. And my friend, Doug, is not the kind of person who asks for help. And the way he gets his needs met is by helping others. So she died. She did not have the coronavirus. She was admitted to the hospital and they FaceTimed each other and he held her hand as she took her last breath. So I got to thinking, what are we most grateful for? Because to get out of this predicament and we will get out of it, the first thing we need to do is mitigate fear, doubt, and anxiety. Learn to be grateful for the small things in life, for anything. Faith replaces fear. So I'd like to offer you a path that I'm taking myself, and you're welcome to come along with me on the journey. We have defined ourselves by our jobs, our titles, our work, how much money we have in the bank. Are we middle class? Are we upper middle class? Are we poor? Are we smart? Are we educated? Are we not educated? All of these references are outside ourselves. Well, when those disappear, who are we? So many years ago, I wrote a book called Leading from the Inside Out because I've discovered that no matter what's happening outside you, the only way out is to go in. And never has that been more relevant than today. Things are happening outside ourselves that are completely beyond our control. And fear and anxiety is created by trying to control things that we cannot control. It creates anxiety. We start tracking into the future. And anxiety is really a story in our heads about something that hasn't happened yet. It produces the biochemistry. And that biochemistry affects our bodies and we have fear. Fear we also called false evidence that appears real. And if you're from New York, fear means fuck everything and run. Either way, fear begets fear. We have a opportunity right now, all of us, we the people, to reclaim ourselves, and this country. If we operate at odds with each other, it's never going to work. I can't control protesters who just want freedom so they can go out and get sick with the coronavirus. Be my guest. Go ahead. Most of us don't think it's safe yet. And the collective knowledge will drive the course of events. So since our external references have collapsed and we're sitting at home with our family, our kids, or maybe you're by yourself, particularly if you're by yourself, I invite you to jump on a call with me and do some work. There's no charge. What I'd like to do is explore the identity of who we are truly, because we all have our greatest gifts and our deepest wounds. But if we're triggered by anger, fear, or doubt, we're totally unresourceful. The only way to get to be resourceful is to stay in the moment. Right now in this moment, I'm talking to you. And then when I talk to you, you're interpreting what I say based on how you see the world. We call that your archetype. But as you interpret what I'm saying, you also have feelings about what I'm saying. You might think, oh, that's a load of shit. I don't need anybody else giving me advice. I need compassion. I don't know what to say in order to connect, but I do want to connect. I want to have a dialogue. If you'd like to engage me and engage with me in a dialogue, I'm here. So let's go in together because we have to create new identities for ourselves. 
the old ones are dying quickly. Who are we? This is not some metaphorical question. It's about creating something grounded, resourceful, and powerful. So when this is over, and it will be over, three months, six months, nine months, a year, I have no idea. We're all in this together. So as we go through this, stay in the moment, take a breath. Let's practice rediscovering our identities.